Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended to provide for a six for a single term of six years for the president and governors and for six year term for members of the National Assembly and State Houses of Assembly and for related matters. I so move. Ah. To second the motion as moved by Honorable John De the bill as moved by Honorable John Deere. So the constitution is two prongs and it has to do with the tenure of the president and governors and the tenure of the legislatures, national and states. Uh, first, I'll start with the, the first prong, which is the tenure for legislatures. And my thinking is this. Uh, I have been in this chamber for, by the grace of God, this is the third term. When I came in 2011, over 200 of us came in as new members. In 2015, the same thing repeated, Honorable Speaker. And this 2019, we have also seen almost two thirds of the members seated here today are new members. Now, the implication of this is that there is no institutional knowledge. There is no experience. That is the implication. If every four years you are losing over 200 members, every four years you are losing almost two thirds of the National Assembly members, it means the experience that you should have, the institutional knowledge is lost. And when new members come, you start learning afresh. Now the argument is this, for the executive, for the judiciary, it is not the same thing. You see a magistrate comes in on level 9, rises through the ranks to become a high court judge, to become a justice of the Supreme Court. It takes him or her not less than 30, 35 years. Now, such a person can easily, very easily, make reference to cases dating 25, 30 years and becomes a bundle of knowledge. You go to the executive, you see a French graduate comes in, stays for 25, 30 years and more to become a director, to become a permanent secretary. Now that is institutional knowledge, that is experience. And such a person has enough knowledge of whatever it takes of the service. And when you come to the legislature, because it is just four year tenure, and for most constituencies, a lot of constituencies that are seated here, even in my own state, Arab Speaker, even in Benue State, there are constituencies where people don't stay for more than one tenure at the National Assembly here. You have just four year tenure and you go back. And that means, and that's not the only constituency, and it's not just affecting Benue. A lot of states have such uh, constituencies where people spend only four years in these other chambers and go back. And that means there is no uh, experience. You can see the quality of the beat for some. Now, if you go to other clients, if you go to other clients, Your Excellency, honorable colleagues, like the U.S., you see somebody in a particular committee staying 25 years. You see, he has a bundle of knowledge in that committee. Now, what we want to do is if we are turning the high turnover every four years, it's over 200, almost two-thirds. The implication is that we are losing so much experience. We are therefore proposing that we should have a six-year tenure for legislators so that even if you are living after one tenure, you know that you have enough experience for the institution. It is not self-seeking. I am not saying the bill is not self-seeking. It is not asking 
uh, for extension of tenure for this members. I think you have given the compendium of your own being, so allow members to make their contribution. Thank you, sir. As well. It is for the executive as well. So let me argue for the executive. Federal constituency in from State. Mr. Speaker, I rise to speak against this uh, bill. Mr. Speaker, I want to say that the problem we have that makes people not to come back to the House is much more of an awareness on the side of the constituents than what happens here. If we are talking of experience, Mr. Speaker, a third term member has more experience than a first term member. And it's left for us to be able to educate the masses of this country to know that when you send somebody to the House as many times as possible, the more you will get from that house rather than send somebody once. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, yes, what you're saying is that there should be a single term of for six years. For executive. You also I'm said no, you also you started by this debating on the legislators. The legislator has said six year multiple term. Uh, that's what we are. It's right. six year multiple term. You will decline now. So Mr Speaker Mr. Speaker, if we are looking at, because I've read the lead, the lead debate, and I've seen where it is written that when you allow these elections to continue after four years, like, there's going to be a lot of killings. Mr. Speaker, if you allow the president to take six years and go, the next president that is going to come, if we are looking at the casualty, is going to also engage in the same casualty to be able to get the sixth term. So the important thing is, how can we make electoral processes and elections in this country Credible and less expensive. That is the issue that we must address and not the number of terms. Mr. Speaker, a president will not be able to, to, to achieve what he wants to, to achieve for the country in four years. So if we are talking about even increasing the terms to a five-year term of, of two, a, a two-term of five years, it's even better. So, to, so, so Mr. Speaker, I rise... To speak against this bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let's take our sentiment from this. We know that second term is usually the big problem that the executives usually have. Because in their second year, even in short, after the first year, people are really talking to them about the second term. And they begin to do all manner of things. And what we are saying here, if the governors will be honest, or the, let me just use the word executive, they will be honest to let us know how much they spend for their second term, it will shock you. So what this bill intends to cure is the money that are being spent belongs to this country. We can save that money. They are actually getting four plus two without a second election. People have said somebody can just come in and own work. That's where the parties need to select good hands. And if you also have a governor that will not work, it will mean that the party will lose that state. So, Mr. Speaker, I support this bill. We shall like scale to second reading. And it will save this country, it will save our democracy. Some people might not believe today, but on rec put it on record today to save our democracy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, I am from Plateau State, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my views is against the bill, and it differs from maybe the expectation of my colleagues. As legislators, Mr. Speaker, it is very important for us to look at the tempo, the political tempo of the nation in making laws. The order. What? What was the point of order? My name is Sada Soli, representative Rule 3, 2. A member may speak for or against the motion, but during consideration of bills, report, or other measures, 
a member can speak on the bill, pointing out the merits and the merits of the bill, including statutory and constitutional, he is not to speak for or against, because the debate is on general principles. So speaking against, speaking for or against is against the rules of the House, but members can speak on the general principles of the bill. For us as lawmakers to do things that is in tandem with the mood of the nation, Mr. Speaker, any action that the Ninth National Assembly is going to take on behalf of Nigerians that will further aggravate the political understanding of the nation, Mr. Speaker, we will not be doing justice to the people we are representing. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, we are talking about six-year term for the executive, meaning the presidents and the governors of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. In an ideal democracy, Mr. Speaker, you cannot ask the president to spend one single year term of six years single term and expect performance. What is wrong with our system, Mr. Speaker, is the ability of Nigerian and public office holders to respect our rules. By the time we are respecting the rules, the laws that are made by National Assembly, a lot of wrongs will be righted. So, Mr. Speaker, in my views, in my view, Mr. Speaker, our democracy doesn't need six years single term for the executive. Our democracy needs to maintain the four years term, two terms for the executive, and the four, four years term for the parliament. If there is anything we need to do, Mr. Speaker, let us look at our electoral reforms. Let us make sure that we have made a, a legal framework that will allow Nigerians to elect leaders that are not going to betray them. And let us make laws that will hold leaders accountable. But to say that we will amend the tenure of our existing executive and that of parliament, Mr. Speaker, to me, it is not time for that and it is not acceptable to someone like me. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm totally against the, the bill that, that, that it should continue, Mr. Speaker. a serious national issue. My name is Engineer Satomi Ahmad. I represent the good people of Jere Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, I'm from Borno State. Mr. Speaker, I align myself directly with my brother that anything that will create an impression to the existing structure so far in our system is unacceptable. To me and to Nigerians, if you look at the quantity of, uh, content of the bill, it's just like general enunciation by proxy or in disguise. So therefore, for any electoral office, be it president or governor, or Senate or member of the House of Representatives. The beauty of democracy is to elect the electorate and Nigerians to vote for leaders they want and they know in every electoral cycle for four years term there is going to be an election. Therefore, this is a very beautiful mechanism where Nigerians will decide who they want to vote for in any electoral calendar. Mr. Speaker, I am totally against this bill in the interest of Nigerians and the people I represent, particularly the young people that are looking up to us to become the leaders of this country. Anything that will touch the Constitution that has to do with extension or amending that sector is totally unacceptable and will not going to particularly me accept it. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, in this regard, I think we need to look into our electoral system to ensure 
that we make a provisions for credible election pro electionary process where the masses and the people of Nigeria will hold us accountable to vote for the leaders that they perform better within any four years calendar time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. For I would like to lend my voice against this bill. What we need in Nigeria is electoral reforms that will afford the people pick right leaders. I believe this House should concentrate more on strengthening the electoral reforms. And I'm aware that we, as the Ninth Assembly, are very focused on strengthening our electoral laws and making sure we pass electoral reforms that will let the citizens pick the right leaders that would work for their own benefit. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am totally against it because of the following reasons. One, Mr. Speaker, I think there is wisdom order. in the four-year tenure. Hold, uh, hold because after the four years, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker hold there, order. Is, there is room for appraisal. Hold of order, Mr. Speaker. It gives the opportunity. Hold of order. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, without state, I stand on order. Nine will three two, where a member may speak for against the motion, but during consideration of bills, report, and other measures, a member can speak on the bill, pointing out the merit and demerit of the bill, including statutory and constitutional issues for and against such measures. He is not to speak for or against because the debate is on the general principle. Mr. Speaker, point of order. Mr. Speaker, because this bill is point going for order. a second reading, so it's at a point general order, principle. Mr. Speaker. So at this point, there is no any member can stand up and start against the bill. Point of order. Rather, either I'm coming, Mr. Speaker. Either the bill should be referred to the committee concerned so that they can go through it. Point of order. Point Thank of you. order. His merits and the merits simply means for or against. I think it's a misapplication of language. What is the merits and what is the merits? It's language. Thank you, it's for and against. So I will really out of order, Mikey, <laughs> or not Mikey, and allow my brother to speak. Maybe the language they say I speak against. That's what people do not want to hear. And so let's be guided as we speak. Uh, 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 they should choose our words carefully. Thank you very much. I will rule you out of order. Provide the avenue for appraisal. When a particular administration has served for four years, it is now time to look back and assess whether the administration has done well or not to deserve re-election. Now, by the time you allow a single tenure of six years, you will shut the, the door to, to that opportunity. So I think it is better to retain the four-year tenure, uh, 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 which will enable an administration to be re-elected, than to simply uh, uh, provide for a six-year single tenure, uh, which will allow the administration uh, the luxury of doing whatever it wants because it knows that it is not coming back. So I think, Mr. Speaker, we should be wary of playing into the hands of our adversaries. Uh, Honorable Gaddi has already said it, but in a very subtle manner. But I think I want to be very blunt here. We already are receiving a lot of passion from several quarters. The ICPC is bashing the National Assembly. Several other quarters in this country are giving us blows. Now there is speculation nationwide that it is the intention of the presidency to have an extension of tenure. That is tenure elongation. Now, bringing this motion at this material time will make our adversaries come to the conclusion that this is an attempt, a very clear one, 
of extending the tenure of this administration. So I think the time is extremely wrong. Which administration? I think we should guide us. Uh, working in tandem. There is no difference. The only difference is that we are in the legislature and that is the executive. But we work for the same purpose and we defend the, uh, the country, we defend the, 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 uh, 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 the, good, the good names and the good intentions of the administration. So we wouldn't want to play into the hands of those who want to see this ad the, the administration of the present administration into any problem. So I think the time is not good and there is wisdom in the four-year tenure. It will provide for the avenue of assessment whether or not to re-elect an administration or, or not. So I am uh, uh, also against the, the bill uh, and I, I hope my colleagues will see light in the arguments I have proffered and uh, uh, refuse to accept the motion. Thank you, sir. Good people of Ganye, Jada, Tongoma, Ebelwa. I am from Adama State. Mr. Speaker, I also want to speak against this very important, this, this bill. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we copied this democracy from, from the U.S. And the essence of having four-year tenure is that after every four years, just like what the last speaker said, we appraise, and if we see that a particular regime is not performing, we change that particular administration. In a situation where if you find a leadership that is unpopular and we have to wait for six years to change that, that particular uh, administration, that will be too difficult and that will be too dangerous for us. And if the man in his own way, Nigeria way, is able to manipulate another six years, uh, next time another person takes over and it's six years, then we are really in trouble. We should maintain our four years. And again, Mr. Speaker, although the bill said six years limitless time for legislators, six years limitless time for legislators, not for a single term. That is also very unpopular in the sense that Nigerians already we have image problem and by the time you say we should have six years tenure because we want to remain here and can continue for six years tenure, already there will be, to, tomorrow's news will be this item that the legislators are planning to have a six year tenure, subsequent ones. And the main issues that we discuss here will not be there. I want to suggest Mr. Speaker, uh, although he has a good intention, the order of the bill, we should collectively make sure that this bill uh, will not cross the second line. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, I want to speak against the proposed amendment. That's because the proposed amendment is self seeking. As members of the legislative arm and as serving members, we cannot come here and amend the bill to suit ourselves. Nigerians will look at it otherwise. I also know that the bill, if amended, is not supposed to affect the existing executive or the legislative arm because laws are not made in retrospect. But the reasons advanced in the affirmative are very fluid and we cannot support the proposed amendment. Thank you very much. For speaker to recognize me. What is your point of order? No, give, give us a section. The section. You refer us to it. Mike. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, while I'm not, while I'm, I'm protected, while I'm not against, or I'm not speaking for or against, but I want to draw an attention, Mr. Speaker, why we are having all these issues, all these issues, is because of the immunity. We should remove the immunity clause completely. Hold on. We should remove the immunity clause. We should remove the immunity clause for both governors and presidency. Let the immunity go off so that there will be accountability, thorough accountability, and ensure that the money made for Nigerians are duly spent in accordance as prescribed by both the lower house and national assembly. I so submit. Well, 
son colegial. Leader. I'm not speaking against this because some people have alluded that Mr. President is interested in internal allegation. The reason that I am not bothered about that is that even Mr. President himself clearly came out at the last meeting of the All Progressive Congress and made it clear to everybody that he is not interested in that. So as far as I'm concerned, that is a no issue. Mr. President never had such intention and he has never said it. And because he's a man of integrity, I have every reason to believe that when he says a thing, he means it, and Nigerians should take him for his words. Having said that, Mr. Speaker, uh, I think I would need to, we need to find a soft landing for our brother. But that notwithstanding, we must point out something here, that were it not for the opportunity of second term, most of the people that occupy the executive offices would have operated with impunity from the one to the end. Particularly when you know what is happening in some states of the Federation at the moment and what has happened in time past. So it will be very, very you know, uh, dangerous for the interests of our people to ever contemplate a single term of six years for anybody. I so contribute. There is a little misunderstanding here. I want to point out one or two things which I have heard colleagues say, which is clearly a misunderstanding. Number one, I am not seeking tenure elongation for the executive. I am not seeking tenure elongation for the executive. The alteration I'm talking about is for 2023 going forward. The reason is simple. That's for the executive. The reason is simple. Re elections of governors and presidents allegedly go three, four times more than the first elections. Now, allegedly, this money has come from the coffers of the states, of the governments, allegedly. Now, if you give a six-year single tenure, a six-year single tenure for the executive, the president, and the governors, most likely you are not going to see a situation where one will fall back to coffers of the state to sponsor elections. That's number one. Number two, the desperation for re-election of governors where limbs are lost, lives are lost, and our common humanity, our common sense of humanity is also lost. Lives don't matter. That will also be cured. So in the intention of this alteration is not for a elongation of tenure for the executive. Now, for the legislature, I am not saying it should be a single term of six years for the legislature. I have never said that. I think that is also a misunderstanding. What I mean is that because of constituencies where there is only one one tenure, let us make it six tenures, but it should still be multiple as it is in the constitution. However, if the mood of the House is that the legislature should be stepped down or the whole thing stepped down, so be it. It's not self-seeking. Which, Which one? The question now, the question now, what the ICPC chairman is alleging members of corruption, stealing money. You were not happy, you bought it. And for you now to now come back again and use a statement on all the governors as people who are stealing money on election, spending too much, allegedly, even if you say allegedly, it's the same matter. I think it is not right. For me, I want to put a caveat that we should explain that one as much as possible proceedings. Uh, thank you. No, he has not had an opportunity. 
The question now is that the bill be read a second time. Those, oh, 